Welcome back to Chem 102 Lab at California State University of Northridge. Today we'll be doing Experiment 10 where we explore the electrochemistry in galvanic cells. But first off, we have to polish the electrodes. So when you're polishing the electrodes, make sure that you don't spend too much time polishing these. You want them to look nice and shiny, like these polished electrodes from their original state like these electrodes, like this electrode, which is dull, kind of black. You want it just to be nice and shiny. Remember, don't take too long polishing these. You may run out of time at the end of the lab. So after these are polished, you're going to want to set up your cell. What you'll need is the beaker, 50 milliliters is fine, and the porous cup, which just goes inside. And that's your galvanic cell that we'll be using for this experiment. When we fill these with solutions, we want the level of solution in the outside cell to be about the same level as inside cell. So, let's go ahead and fill them up. First we'll fill up the outside cell. And again, we just want the levels to be the same. So the volume may not match up, but again, if the volumes look like they're the same outside and inside, then we're all good to go. So if you guys can see, it's a little hard and it's a little dark in there, but the level inside the cup and on the outside of the cup are about the same level. So now what we can do is go on with our experiment. We'll want to connect our electrodes to an alligator clip. And once we've done that, we'll set them just inside the cell, one in each. And we want to make sure that the solutions are in contact with the electrodes. After we have that, we want to connect these to the voltmeter. Now you'll notice that there is a plastic part of the post and the metal part of the post. From 101, if you remember correctly, plastic's not a very good conductor. So we want to make sure it's connected to the metal part of the post. Also, when you connect these, do note which electrode is connected to which post. You'll see a little positive and negative sign on the bottom of this. Make sure you just write down which one's connected to what. So if you connect them and it's very negative, then you'll want to just switch them up until you get a positive reading on your voltmeter. Just like that, make sure you record your data and these solutions may be reused so you can just put them back in the cups and we can continue on with the rest of our experiment. So when you perform your experiment with a bromine solution, make sure that everything is done in the hood. So you'll have to take all of your setups and bring it into the hood to perform the experiment. If you don't, bromine smells really bad. I'll smell it, you'll smell it, we'll all smell it, and we'll all be pretty sad and upset. So, if you spill any of the bromine on yourself, Remember, it's an irritant and it's a strong oxidizer. So you're going to want to pour some of this sodium thiosulfate solution on where you were burnt and then rinse it off in the sink like anything else that you spill on yourself. After you're done with the waste, you want to put all bromine waste into this bromine waste bottle. Remember, you don't take any of it out of the hood because it smells really bad and it's very harmful for you to be smelling this stuff. Thanks for watching this video and good luck on your finals.